What's going on, Rashad? Congrats. Um, how far do you think you've come from a technical standpoint after five college seasons? Uh, what's up? Um, but, uh, you said from a technical standpoint? Point? Yes, Sorry, sir. I didn't hear you completely. Now you're good. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, from the lowest freshman technical to one of the best players in college football, and I just think that's uh, – due to the coaches we had at Pitt. You know, Coach Partridge is the best D-line coach in the country, and he just teaches technique, and, and it's all about technique in the run, in the pass. Anytime you're on the field, uh, you got to be able to make plays within the technique. So with that coaching and the, and the way we play ball at Pitt, I think I've, I've put my technique uh, to the top um, compared to, you know, other college pass rushers. Glennon. Hey, Rashad, congratulations. Um, yeah, just uh, wanted to ask you what, what your thoughts were. It I, I, looks like you've kind of gone back and forth between inside and outside, and I think you played a 4-3 at Pitt. Uh, you know, where, where do you see yourself fitting in uh, with a 3-4 defense? Do you feel like you can play pretty much regularly on the on the edge, or, or could you move inside as, as well? Yeah, um, I mean, with that, I never played inside except for at the Senior Bowl. Um, I always played on the edge at Pitt. We were 4-3. Uh, I think my redshirt freshman year, I played nose, but that was our pass rush um, in one of our pass rush packages. But after that year, I went back out to the edge. But I know um, I could do it. That's one thing about me. I'm versatile. I can move up and down the line. And uh, wherever they plan on seeing me, I think they, they could see me standing up um, on the edge or if they need to knock me down there uh, at the defensive end with the hand in the dirt, uh, I think they know. Uh, I have the ability to do either, and I'll be ready to do whichever one, you know, they kind of point me towards. Teresa. Rashad, uh, after the injury in 2019, how effective do you think it was having the year last season that you had to, you know, to put any doubts uh, out, you know, to erase any doubts that people might have had about how your recovery um, I think it was a must, you know, I might be looking after how this weekend's went, um, I might be looking at an undrafted free agent or seventh round or something later, uh, because that tape from 2018, you know, I was making plays, but it's just not good technically, there's not good technique there, and it's kind of just going off a natural skill, uh, so that before that 2019 season, I put in a lot of work because I didn't want to be that type of player anymore, and I, got, I went down, so I just continued that work uh, before the 2020 season, and you know, Coming off an injury, I had a lot of prove, and then there was doubt with the season with COVID. I just, you know, uh, one of our old strength coaches, um, he just said, if you if you put the money in the bank, it'll be there when it's time to pull it out. So that's that's what I I carried the mindset through every day. I worked out and uh, prepared my leg rehab or my technique and my skill set, uh, just preparing preparing myself to be ready in 2020. So when it was time to you know cash out and make those plays, uh, all the deposits will be there. Jim Wyatt. And Rashad, how much do you feel like the Titans are getting maybe a steal in you in round four? And how excited are you to kind of come in and, and try to find your niche here in Tennessee? Yeah, first, I mean, I'm so excited. I'm so thankful for them and Coach Vabro and, and uh, the whole the whole staff that, you know, they put the faith in me to pick me. Um, and I'll be ready to come there and work and make plays and do whatever I'm asked with them. And I think, you know, when I got on the phone, I just felt like they got the biggest steal of the draft. You know, I thought I would be going on day two, honestly, uh, but some things just change. And, uh, but we're at this point now, I've, I've been drafted and people dream of this. And I'm so thankful for it. And um, for them to pick me, I'm excited. But I, I think um, I think they got a great value picking me and I'm excited to uh, prove that to them. And they, and they signed another guy from Pittsburgh, obviously the Steelers and Bud Dupree. Do you, pay attention to the Steelers and kind of going to be cool you coming from University of Pittsburgh to join forces with him in Nashville? Absolutely. Um, I mean, just from him being a still previous Steeler, um, I was um, always watched him and, and uh, TJ and because they were, they were great pass rushers. And then actually when I was out in Arizona training, I, I got connected with Bud. Me and him have the same financial advisor now. And I, I've been out with him a few times. I've texted text with him he was out at exos where i was at recovering from his acl and we would chat it up and talk and we've had dinner so me and him are already a little bit acquainted and i'll definitely be trying to learn from him and pick his mind and maybe try to get on his nerves i know he likes asking me questions here and there about acls so maybe if i help him he'll help me even more david beauclair 
you, you planned on going to Michigan. That didn't work out. You had the, the knee injury 2019 that you had to overcome. Talk about kind of what you've learned the last few years uh, about adapting when, when things don't go exactly according to plan. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've talked about this a lot. And to me, I just think um, I've always been a, a big it is what it is type of person. So, you know, kind of hold the emotions down for it and just and just deal with it and on to the next. And I think um, with the ACL, I learned the most, you know, back with the Michigan situation, I was still young. I, I wouldn't say I learned it yet. I just kind of went with the flow and was excited to be at Pitt and thankful that they wanted me. I was going somewhere where I'm wanted. Uh, same way with the Titans. Um, but with the ACL mainly, and uh, even this draft, you know, it tested my uh, patience. With the ACL, I learned a lot of patience. Um, my work ethic and desire to be great and all that, it stayed the same through the, uh, through the rehab and the recovery. That wasn't hard for me. It was just the patience of not being where I wanted to be at the time I wanted to be. Um, just being prepared at all, at all times. So then when my time did come and it was time for me, I would be ready and be able to show that. So for me, it's, it's just about patience and continuing to strengthen my patience. Harry. Rashad, you had uh, 14 tackles for loss last year in just nine games. Is that something you take a lot of pride in, being able to make plays behind the line of scrimmage uh, and tackle backs for losses? Oh, absolutely. And um, even with that, you know, I always set high, high standards for myself because the higher standards you, you set, if you achieve them, then you're you're looking at elite status. And if you fall a little bit short, you're still in great status. And um, even with that 14, I wanted more sacks. You know, I see myself as a, I should have had at least a sack every game. And I had played nine games and I didn't have nine sacks. You know, in college, those sacks count as TFL. So I just see I could have had more, but I definitely pride myself in that. You know, I, I pride myself in, I feel like I can affect every play, uh, whether I'm the one making the play, the TFL or the sack, or I'm the one taking on blocks so someone else can go make the play. You know, I just want to help the defense uh, every play and, and cause havoc for offenses and cause them to have to plan for me. Joe Rexroad. Rashad, just wondering, as a pass rusher, where are you best, and what what you know what do you need to the most? Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I just always say best naturally on the edge, but that's because that's all I've ever played. You know, if you if I get reps in the inside or at the three or somewhere and practice it, I think I'd just be just as good at that, and I think I I have the versatility to play up and down the line. Um, and for me, the biggest thing I would say work on, you know, these tall guys, I've, I've heard it from middle school all the way through college is just pad level. Uh, it's, it's consistency with my pad level. When my pad level is low, I have a good kid. When my pad level is low, my get off is fine. I, I look, um, I have a quick first step. I get back there and I win. It's when I get high and I look in the backfield and um, I try to see maybe a little too much is when it just doesn't look as good on film. So for me, it's just my consistency with my uh, pad level. Cool. You, uh, you mentioned knowing Bud, Harold Landry uh, played a ton of snaps too. So both of them in their best seasons have played a ton of snaps. You're going to have to play very well to get, get them off the field. How much you're looking for maybe uh, forward to the, to the challenge of, of doing well enough to getting one of them to take a breather. Uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's why they picked me and, and I'm excited to get behind both those guys and learn and, and push them. And it gives me something to work for if it was just, easy for me to step into, then uh, it'll be a little different mindset, but it just gives me something to even work for and just adds to the thing to the list to work harder for. So um, it's just another task or hurdle to work towards and that's uh, nothing I haven't done before. So I'm excited for it. And i um, just excited again to be behind those guys and learn from them and be a part of the <coughs> defense, uh, you know, turning around on the defense in the pass rush. And that's why they picked up Bud Dupree. Um, and, you know, I feel like why they just drafted me myself. On. Yeah, Rashad, I know you guys really like uh, uh, Coach Narduzzi and, and just looking at what you guys did at Pittsburgh, you know, using you standing up, hand in the dirt, stunts, both sides rushing the passer. How much did that prepare you for what you feel the Titans will, will use you as? Um, I think I think it, it prepares us well. And I mean, that's why I chose Coach Narduzzi and Pitt and uh, everybody knew what he did at Michigan State. And then again, working with Coach Partridge, those two guys, just I'm so thankful for. Um, and the position they put that D line in uh, with, with uh, it's just our defense is made for us to make plays. You know, some defenses are made for the linebackers to make plays and D lines, just to hold gaps and stuff like that. 
our defense is they want us to get back there. They'll put us in situations to have one-on-ones. They'll put us in situations to have blitzers to get us one-on-ones. Um, and they expect us to make the plays. You know, we play man man coverage, so they expect us to be able to get back there. So our, our DBs aren't running up and down the field for five seconds of a whole long play because it'll break down eventually. And I think um, being in that type of uh, defense where essentially if there's no D-line, our defense isn't going to – perform very very well but we had a good line these past couple of years so we've been in the top of every category so I think it just prepares me uh, to come step in um, on the Titans defense and you know put my best foot forward and no, no matter what I'm asked to do be able to do it. And what about the meetings with, with the Titans uh, pre-draft uh, I'm sure you met with coach Rabel and uh, did the conversation come up uh, uh, what you did the sack on uh, Tyler Rabel? <laughs> so <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble before I even ever get there. But, um, yeah, so I had some meetings with uh, Jay Rob and um, Coach Rabel and um, Coach Pro and all of them. And I did – I think the second meeting I had was with Coach Rabel. And I brought it up to him, and he he just kind of – he laughed at me. and He might have cussed at me or something. But besides that, it was a good, good little laugh. And he said it, I, I had a good game. And – his son will be a good player. He's still young, so excited for that too. Ben Arthur. Hey, uh, R- Rashad, where are you um, situated? Where have you been situated for the draft? Um, like, are you at home? And then, what what has it kind of just been like taking this all in? You know, with your family and your and your loved ones. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm, I'm I am down home in Cooper City, but I am at my Cooper City, Florida, so sunny South Florida. I'm at my best friend's house from my high school. You know, we got the little pool out here. Uh, you know, all my friends and family in there. Um, I've had, you know, my best friend from high school, his parents and brothers, uh, three other of my best friends from high school, their parents, um, my mom, dad, sister, both sets of grandparents. Um, my uh, college best friend, Keyshawn Camp, you know, who's also my teammate. I lived with him. Um, all three years out of the four at Pitt, and um, that's just my my go-to right there. So just to have all that uh, love and support around me and everybody that's helped me get here through the great times and the bad times, um, it's just been great. And I don't know how um, where I'd be if it wasn't for them. So I'm so thankful for them to be here, and they've uh, helped me put, uh, throughout the past three days. You know, day two was um, you know a little rougher on me, um, but I came back day three. They were all here. You know waiting just like I was. None of them ever wavered or left when the nights got long on day one or day two. And um, I'm just so thankful for them. So that's about it on that. Last question for you, Glennon. Yeah, Rashad, I got a, I got a double dip to, to finish you off here. Uh, one, you know, I know a lot of edge rushers, it's all about obviously getting after the quarterback um, and not much attention is paid to stop on the run. It looks like you've got a lot of high marks uh, and your career as being a run stopper too. How how important is that for you? And, and how what's allowed you to be a good guy against the run from the edge also? Um, to me, it's everything. You know, Coach Narduzzi and Coach Partridge, um, especially Coach Narduzzi, he uh, preaches you have to stop the run. If you don't stop the run, you're not going to get sacks. You're not going to get to hit the quarterback. You're not going to get to do the fun stuff, stuff that gets you drafted, the stuff that gets you paid when you get in the league, those type of things. Once you stop the run, teams have to pass. So that was our mindset as a D-line. You know, we we weren't mad or shy away to play against the run. We wanted to stop the run, get TFLs, stop teams that were highest in the NCAA and rushing, have their lowest games on the season. So then they had to start passing and we could just go out there and have fun. So for me, I looked forward to stopping the run. And because when you stop the run, it's just you're taking the old line and soul away from them because they can't block you in a run block. They definitely can't block you in a pass block. So when you just posting guys up, shedding them and making TFLs and getting in the backfield and running backs that are used to being able to get six yards of carry or getting negative yards of carry. It just makes the game fun. That's when you get up and you celebrate with the whole defense and you get excited to start, you know, in the in the second quarter, third quarter, get late in the game when they can't run, get after the passer, and it just makes the whole game fun. So that's something that's just been building me um, through Coach Narduzzi. Yeah, and then the other was, uh, I know you touched on Michigan earlier, but, uh, you know, as, as you look back at that at this point, um, a, a feeling of a lot of satisfaction. I, I imagine that, you know, you, that was where your, you know, a lot of your college uh, experience kind of started was maybe getting the scholarship 
sort of revoked and, and here you are going in the NFL draft? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, my whole life, I always thought maybe I was a pretty, you know, revengeful or never forgive type person. But like I said, I'm an is what it is type of person. And, you know, after that freshman year of college, I was kind of over the Michigan thing. Like it was it's a business. NCAA is a business. Um, they got to do what they think is best for them. And I was excited that I was that pick because they wanted me, you know, when they recruited me in a week left before signing that they made it known how much they wanted me. And I was just excited to be where I was wanted. So, but looking back at it, um, you know, I think everything, I always say everything happens for a reason. So it wasn't meant for me to go to Michigan and who knows, I might not be getting drafted if I went there or nobody knows how that would have played out. I went to Pitt, had a great career, was all American and, and just got drafted to the NFL. So I just want to be thankful for them, not really think about the people that weren't too high on me. Thank you.